For tape, CDs, DVDs, to our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, Zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. This is the 2015 Men's Conference being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Camp in Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Saturday afternoon, 3 o'clock p.m., October the 17th, 2015. Mickey Pinson is the speaker of the service teaching on the power of reckoning. This is now the conclusion of this message from Part A. I said earlier that all of us could be a homosexual. All of us could be an adulterer. All of us could be a drunkhead. Come on now. I know we, we're down on homosexuality, but hey, they're not the only ones going to hell. Adulterers are an adulteress. You know that? They're going to if they don't repent. Now, all of that is there, but there are certain things that, it, 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 that we're more uh, prone, uh, more susceptible to. We're more susceptible to those things. And it has a natural appeal in our flesh. But are when opportunities available to fulfill it? Let me say something, guys, and you agree or disagree. It's not a sin to be tempted to be a homosexual. That's not a sin. The sin is when we give into it and do it. And it'll just keep, whatever, adulterer, pornography, whatever it is. But I say homosexuality because that's the big one. You know, that's the big one. Especially those that don't do it. It's a big one. But then you talk about what they're doing. Oh, well, that's not the big one. It makes sense. Praise God. Now, we don't have the opportunity to do it. It's not there. The act, or we have access to, pro, to a provision to fulfill it. Then it becomes difficult to avoid that sin from reigning in our mortal body. Of course, if our flesh wants to fulfill a lust, then we'll move closer to the opportunities to fulfill it. Instead of rebuking it and fleeing from it. Likewise, if our flesh wants to fulfill us, then we'll make a provision so we can fulfill it. Romans 13, 14. But put you on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. And that's where our problem comes right there. If you might make the provision today, and 12 years later, the provision, you take advantage of that provision. It's still there. You didn't get rid of it. You didn't burn it. You didn't do something. There's, there's a man he's in our church now. And a friend had given him a bunch of boxes of stuff, you know, got getting rid of cleaning out his barn, garage or something. And he's down by his pond. Now, he's a Holy Ghost man now, but he learned a lesson. He's down by the pond and he's throwing stuff, just throwing them in the pond. That's a good place to throw stuff. And he's throwing it in the pond. And he came across a joint, marijuana. He didn't throw it in the pond. He hid it in the barn. What is that? Making provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust there. Huh? Okay. And later on, you know what he did. In a moment of weakness, he went back and smoked that thing. What are you making provision for? God knows and you know. Stop and think about it. Why am I, why am I not getting rid of this? Why, why, am I, why am I driving down that particular road? Why do I go to this particular place? Is there something there that's feeding your flesh? You're making provision for it. it you know, I'm going to tell you this. The devil doesn't care if it takes 20 years for you to, to take advantage of that provision or to use that provision. He doesn't care. He doesn't care how long it takes for him to, to wear you down and, and to make you fail. He is patient with that. On the other hand, if we want to avoid fulfilling lust, then we'll flee any and all opportunities to fulfill it. Uh, maybe you said no to it last week. Are you going to say no to it tomorrow? Watch out after you get after you have a victory, because you sometimes we let our guard down after we have a victory. I expect y'all to be just as excited about what you're hearing right now as you have everything else you've heard. <laughs> Sin is real, and if you if you're not careful, I'm not careful. We'll do it before the day's over. The devil is not on vacation. Neither is your flesh or my flesh. So why is this so important? Because you're not going to heaven with sin. Or practicing sin. 
you may believe this hyper of grace they have now, you know. You know, not only are you forgiven of your past, but everything that you're ever going to do, it's all forgiven. It's going to do what you want to now. You have unmerited faith. No, there's no such thing as unmerited faith. That's, that's out of the pits of hell. You look. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. How did he find grace? Was it unmerited favor? No. It said he, he was a righteous man. God said so. He was a preacher of righteousness. He found grace because he was a righteous man. It wasn't unmerited faith. Favor. If it was unmerited favor, he could he couldn't have destroyed any of them. They all why, why was what's the purpose of the blood? If it's unmerited favor, what's the purpose of hell? We all have unmerited favor. Sounds good. Sounds good to the flesh, but it's not so. This thing's a fight. We, we try so hard to get out of the fight, but we're not going to get out of the fight. We're never going to get out of it. You're never going to get out of it. That bothers you, I'm sorry. But you're never going to get out of the fight. And likewise, if we want to uh, avoid fulfilling the lust, and we'll not make any provision to fulfill it. But instead, we'll destroy any and all provisions that are available to fulfill our lust. And they'll go back and pick them up later. Go buy a new one. You know, I, I have to say, my the assistant pastor, I told he I know he did. He he smashed several phones. He was working for UPS and he and uh, he was delivering and that phone in fact you know what he did? He took it, threw it out on the road. He had to break <laughs> several phones. I said he had to break several phones over a period of time. Learned to get a flip phone. Had to have set the computer in the living room where everybody could see it. I, I, I know another man in ministry. He had to totally get rid of computers. But the assistant passed and he had to give his wife password to the computer. Then he set it up where she could see what he was doing. It's accountability. But it works. If you really want to overcome that. I don't know. Can we say we've overcome till we quit breathing? You know what I'm saying. Can we truthfully not overcome that? Watch out. I think the devil's just waiting for us to make a stupid statement like that. He's going to prove you wrong. I hope not. Maybe not. We had a young man, he came out of prison. He went there for drugs. And uh, he was there with his mother in the church. He stood up and said, I'm never going back to prison. I'm never, because I'm never going to do drugs again. In fact, I'm going to start talking to young people and turning them away from drugs. I'm going to do this. I'm, 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 I'm. And I thought, oh, buddy, I wouldn't be saying that. Wasn't long he's back in prison. Still has a problem with drugs. That's years ago. My wife um, saw another problem, and the Lord showed her, and that's women. And so she got him over there and told his mother, come over, I want to talk to you both. And she said, son, if you don't leave those women alone, you're going to be back in prison. You know what he did? Maybe you think he thanked her and said, oh, well, I'm glad you told me. No, he got mad and quit coming to our church. His mom followed him over to the other church, and then he's back in prison. Romans 6, 13, neither yield you your members as instruments, that means tools, devices, or agencies of unrighteousness unto sin. Your eyes, your ears, we just go on down through the body. Don't yield your members as tools or instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. But yield yourselves unto God. That's, a, that's different, isn't it? Yield yourselves unto God. Have you ever committed all the members of your body to God? Offer your body a living sacrifice unto God, holy and acceptable, which is your reasonable service. Have you ever done that with your body? Yield yourselves unto God. You know what? Get deliverance. Get deliverance and then do these things. Praise God. Let God set you free. And then stay and then practice this. If we don't, we're going to go back to it. You understand? We're going to go back to it. As those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments, tools, devices, or agencies of righteousness unto God. That's what we do. Victory over our flesh, the world, and the devil is dependent upon who or what we yield to. You know that. If we fail in sin, it'll be because we yielded to those things or impressions that were enticing us away from the righteousness, away from righteousness and pleasing God. Victory or defeat moves along with 
and in the direction of our yielding are in accordance to what or who we yield to. It's, you know, it's such a joy. It is for me to realize that we're an instrument of righteousness. Oh, praise God. Unto God. Rather than an instrument of sin and unrighteousness, unto death to God. Ourselves and those connected with us. Think of Achan. What was Achan? Achan was an instrument of sin and unrighteousness. Unto defeat and death to his own self, to his family, those connected with him. He caused uh, the first defeat of the nation of Israel when they went to the promised land. Because what did he do? His hands were instruments of, of disobedience and unrighteousness when he used them to steal things out of Jericho and then hide them under his tent. Are you, are you allowing your, the members of your body to be used as instruments of unrighteousness? Fourteen, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you're not under the law, but under grace. Now there you have to understand the difference between, in grace, what real grace is. Grace is the divine enablement. It's the influence of God. It's the power of God. That's what grace is. So let's read it that way. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you're not under the law, but under the divine influence of God, the power of God. Let's read it the other way. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you're not under the law, but under unmerited favor. That won't work. The, the thing about unmerited favor is it doesn't deliver you from anything. That concept doesn't deliver you from anything. It's just saying, I'm not really responsible for what I did. God overlooks it. It's okay. What or who has dominion over you and me? What had dominion over us last night? This morning, or at home, or on the job? When you talk to your wife, what had dominion over you? Are we a uh, chameleon? You know what those are. You used to sell them at the State Fair of Texas to them. Animal rights people stopped all that. I, I remember going, I grew up in Dallas, go and pitch a nickel on a plate and you get a free chicken or a duck, take them home. And we won some of them. And we took them home. And they grew up. And one day I came home from school and they weren't there because they were in the freezer. <laughs> I was not happy. But that you could, these lit, y'all know what I'm talking about, chameleon, and they change colors, whatever they're on. Are we a chameleon? Just fitting into whatever atmosphere we find ourselves in? Or do we practice that old saying, while in Rome, do as the Romans do? And here's where they twist the scripture and Paul said, I'll be all things to all men. And say, see there, I can just do whatever I want to. You know, get a tattoo so I can talk to people with tattoos. I know some of you have tattoos. But I, I'm not condemning you, you know. That's kind of hard to deal with, isn't it? Let me ask, I want to ask a question. You can, I want you to respond. How many of you have a tattoo and you wish you didn't have it? Hard to do. Yes. I'm not, I'm not condemning you. I'm just, I want these uh, around here, uh, well, we've got a few young ones here to see that. Hard to get rid of, aren't they? Do we practice the old saying? Do we do that? Uh, is, is that our definition of grace? Just do whatever. Those who claim to be saved and yet continue in their sins have conveniently redefined grace as unmerited favor so they can enjoy, excuse me, enjoy, avoid true repentance. To properly define grace, we must look at what grace does in our lives. Listen to this, Titus 2 11. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Oh, that's wonderful. There's a, what is his name? Prince, I can't remember. Eric. Not the one that wrote the books, but that other one. Joseph Prince. Joseph Prince, thank you. His program is named Grace. It's all about grace. I hope you're not watching him. <laughs> Sir? Yes. But what he teaches about grace, brother, is not right. Yes, sir. And I just gave you a definition of grace. Grace, that kind of grace feels good. I'm sorry, I named his name, but... If you, I'll, I'll name another one. If you're watching that guy down in Houston, smile no, smile on He also teaches grace. Here's Bible college. I know that. Okay. I heard, but I didn't name his name. No, I did. Okay. I watched you. Okay. The one down in Houston, the smiley guy, you watching him. You know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> awesome. Wrote your best life now. Wicked. He's wrote a new book called I Am. Somebody tell me they, they got the book, they thought, oh, this is going to talk about Jesus. I am. You know, I, I am. You know what the book's about? It's about, I'm, I'm, uh, it's basically a positive 
attitude of success. That's what it is. And I am this, I am that, and I am this, I am that. Not Jesus, I am. Praise God. Now, for the grace of God that brings salvation is pure to all men. Now, brother, you see if this is what Joseph Prince preaches, because I'm going to give you the, the, the verses following. Okay. I don't watch my mother does. Okay. I thought you still my mother. Sir? I was up for my mother. Right, I thought you still my mother. She can watch what she wants to do. This 11th verse is very popular and most often quoted without the rest of the context. <clears throat> but look at the rest of the passage of Scripture and discover the true definition and purpose of grace. Here's what grace, real grace is. Teaching us, grace, the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. If you're the grace, you're, your definition of grace doesn't teach you to deny ungodliness and worldly lust and to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, then it's the wrong grace. Okay. If it's a grace that says you can do what you want to do, everything's okay, it's the wrong grace. What is grace doing in and for us? What is grace doing? Grace, the divine influence of God, is teaching us something. That we must deny ungodliness and deny worldly lust, or reckon ourselves dead indeed unto these things. That we should rather live soberly, righteously, and godly now in this present world, and yes, we can by the grace or the power of God. In this present world, in this present world, as a tree falls, so shall it lie. The wicked will still be wicked, and the righteous will still be righteous when this thing's over. Some people think, that when they die, all of a sudden their anger, their bitterness, their foremongering, all that's just going to, like, you know, as they're going up in the sky, it's just going to fall off of them. I'm going to tell you the only thing, I know this is hard. The only thing that's going to get us in heaven is the likeness of Christ in us. That's the only thing that's going to heaven. He's not having people up there that are lying, cheating, stealing, cussing. Doing all this. They're not going to be, they're not going to be no, a, a drug rehab in heaven. Okay? You say, well, that's just too hard. I don't like that. You know what they said to Jesus in John chapter 6? This is a hard saying. Who can receive it? Who can receive it? Well, that brother cleaned in and he, he fasted and prayed for 30 days in his church. Locked himself up in there. At the end of 30 days, he had a vision. This is all he got out of that. I don't know what he's thinking he'd get, but he's asking God how to build that church, how to be a, a good pastor and all that. When he got through, he had a vision. In the vision, a man was going through hell, pulling people up by the hair of the head and shoving them back in the flames. And he said, God, what does that mean? He said, I'm, the man was looking for the preacher that lied to him. He's looking for the preacher that lied to him. I want to tell you what. God had mercy on some of these preachers. Amen. They're preaching this stuff. When a man stands behind the pulpit like that one in Houston <coughs> and never preaches self, never preaches repentance, never tells people they need to repent and get right, he's not preaching the gospel no more. When I hear anyone preach, I want to hear the gospel. Yes. Where is the gospel in that sermon? When someone teaches, where is the gospel in that teaching? You know, I was I went to Mexico for 25 years, and uh, I went to one particular place in, in I don't need to name that in Mexico, and uh, I saw when they started, they, a very humble beginning in that church, and they grow and grow and grow, and they were getting bigger and bigger, and finally they got this big building with air conditioning. I mean, that's that's rare for a church in Mexico, air conditioning. And uh, so they, they began to have a very large crowd. Uh, and then he was appointed over all the churches of that organization in Mexico, the pastor. But I could tell something. I, I still preach the same thing. I mean, I preach to them like I'm preaching you, like I preach at home. You, I preach this way at home. Because I want people to make heaven. I want you to make it. I want to make heaven. I'm listening to what I preach. I always preach to myself first. You know that. Sermon's no good if you can't preach it to yourself. But they got they got their attitude towards me started changing. <clears throat> I, I saw them begin to do different things. 
Uh, they moved back the chairs in that new building, showed them to the side, turned the lights off, turned on colored lights and the strobe light and allowed music to shake the building and it's out just dancing. They did one, I just call it the choo-choo train. I don't know what it is. They all put their hands on each other's shoulders and went around like this. Oh, and just having a great old time. <laughs> Somebody dropped the set out of their room. <laughs> and, uh, you know what the pastor knew is bothered me. He said, man, we just let, they, they enjoy doing it. We just let them do it. Well, you're going to let them do that. What else are you going to let them do? Well, we're sitting there, me and the uh, assistant pastor went with me, and it's dark in there, and they're doing this, and I'm not enjoying it. <laughs> and uh, then the smoke machine came on, and they just got it. And it was, but they overdid it, and I, I had to go outside. I couldn't breathe. <laughs> Now, I'm going to tell you, I know I'm getting a lot of things, but that smoke machine business, uh, did they never read about the strange fire? Uh, Moses, two of the sons of the strange fire. Did they never read that? that? All it was, they were trying to simulate the reality of God, the, the true work. That's all they were doing. And what is that smoke doing? Trying to simulate the real glory of God coming in there. I'd run out of that. Just run out. But anyway, they... And, and so they be uh, in time they don't want to come preach anymore because they they wanted more people, more numbers, bigger church. Um, praise God! You know the closer Jesus got to the cross, the less people follow him. You know that. The closer we get to uh, truth, real truth, the less people are going to follow you. I'm not saying be crazy. I, I remember growing up in church uh, in there in Dallas in, um, back in the 60s. And there was an old gentleman come there, and they had testimony service, you know. He'd stand up, and he'd come down on that TV. Now, look, all they're doing is, they don't even, when they're fighting, they're not even really hitting each other. There's no language. There's no sex. You know, gun smoke, uh, I love Lucy, whatever. And he's telling them, they, and, and oh, it's making people uncomfortable in that church. They finally got him to quit and stand up and testify. They just sat him down. He, he was on to something. You know that? He was on to something. My parents, godly people. I'd go visit them. I'd sit there, and, they, and this was years ago. And they're sitting there, and this program's come on, and they're sitting there like nothing. Oh, my goodness. You mean you're not going to turn that thing off or switch the channel? They're just sitting there. You know how you boil a frog? Put it in cold water, just turn the heat up slowly. Are you boiling? Are you in boil? What is grace doing in it for us? It's in this present world. What we are now in this present world, when we check out, is what will be in eternity. You know, in eternity, uh, part of part of the torment of hell, people be trying to still fulfill these lusts, and they can't do it. They can't do it. Is what your definition of grace is doing for you? Is it teaching you to turn from sinful sinful lust and to reckon yourself dead and lead into sin, unto sin and alive to God? He said, looking for that, verse 13, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. Those who will not reckon themselves dead to sin and prove it by turning away from that sin have no true and real source for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of Christ. You know, he, he lists, these shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Are you doing those things? Are you fantasizing about them? Fantasizing. Jesus said, it's the same thing as doing it. Right? Look on a woman to lust after her, and you've committed adultery in your heart already. It's the same thing. Either by way of present inward, uh, the blessed hope, the real source of that blessed hope, and the glorious appearing of Jesus Christ. Friends, the time is very short for all of us. Verse 13, Neither you, you, your members as instruments or tools or devices of it, or agencies of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your, the body of death. O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? And your members as instruments, tools, devices, or agencies of righteousness unto God. Now victory over our flesh, the world and the devil is dependent upon who or what we yield to. Even in our mind and in our thoughts. You know, I want to think about it, but I'm not going to do it. Watch out. What we think we'll be doing. 
If we fail in sin, it will be because we yielded to those things, our impressions, that were enticing us away from righteousness and pleasing God. Victory or defeat moves along with and in the direction of our yielding or in accordance to what we yield to. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. It's, a, it's such a joy to realize that we're instruments of righteousness unto God rather than an instrument of sin and unrighteousness unto the death to God, ourselves, and those connected to us. Second Timothy 4, 7. Paul says, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I kept the faith. From now on there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but to all them also that love his appearing. Fight. Men, men fight. I know women do too. One time I was working in the grocery store in Greenville, Texas, and these two black women got into it. Now they, they're for real. They ain't playing around. And uh, they're in the produce section. I'm sorry, but they, you know they can, they can do it. All right? Am I right? And I don't know. They both had kids in there. And they, I don't know what one buggy pushed the other or something. They got into it. And they was pulling hair. And, I mean, they were getting after it. And so uh, one of them ran back and got a knife off the shelf and come up there and go, go to the check stand buy it and go use it. <laughs> and I, I, I told I told the, the girl checking out, I said, "Don't sell it to them. Don't sell it to her." Well, the other had a, had broke a coke bottle. They were glass in, you know. She's and she's ready. I mean, this is what till the police could get there. Thank God we're next door to the police station. I mean, they know how to fight. The men like to fight, don't they? <laughs> Some men do. Praise God. I know you're saying you wouldn't. If somebody provoked you far enough, let's, let's see what you did. You're ready to fight when somebody pulls out in front of you and it was your turn. It's a good thing you don't have a, a gun mounted on the, some kind of AK wear on, on your hood. I, my youngest son's got a serious, serious case of road rage. I keep talking to him. I said, son, someday, you keep this up, someday, you're going to really regret well, it's my turn to go. Well, let him go. Drive friendly. Be courteous. Maybe they're maybe they're on their way to the hospital. Maybe they're late to work. Let them go. Anyway, if we but we're going to talk about fighting something that's that's good. If you won't fight for your soul, who's going to fight for your soul? If you're not going to fight for righteousness, who's going to do it for you? If we don't fight, we won't finish our course. That's what he said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. If we won't keep the faith, if, if we won't fight, we won't keep the faith, we won't finish our course, and we'll lose our crown of righteousness that's laid up for us toward that great day. He said, let no man take your crown from you. It's a very close fight, but it's also an inward fight. And something, something is going to die. Either our flesh with its lust and affections, our eternal soul is going to die. One or the other is going to die. We're not, this is not a game. We're not playing here. This is for real. He said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. They didn't really know what they were doing. Do we really understand what this is about? It's a new fight every day and every minute. Sometimes we war and crucify our flesh with its affections and lusts, and sometimes we're defeated. You know that. Can we, can we afford to give up the battle if it's too intense or if we momentarily fail? We can't give up. Certainly not. The stakes are much too high. You men, you're men. Many of your fathers, your husbands. And we heard a good word today, you know, how, because you're the father, you're the head, you're the head over that house. You have authority, even spiritually, over that house. We can't give up if we could see the impact of our giving up. Even selfish suicide. You know suicide is so selfish. That is so selfish. I believe that's a high <coughs> selfishness is to commit suicide. I just can't deal with it any longer. Selfish thing you. You think I'm mean, don't you? No, I think they're mean. I know. I've watched it in my own family. The, what the family had to deal with after they took the cowardly way out. Blaming themselves. Embarrassment. Shame. Plus the cost of funeral. If we could see the impact, 
that we'd have all those we leave behind. If we could see the immense pain, the, the grief of the tar, uh, eternal torment is, we would surely not give up. To give up or just to give in is literally like jumping out of the frying pan into the fire. Praise God. I'm going to go ahead and finish this, uh, of this part. 2 Corinthians 4.16 For which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, I want to tell you something. That fight you're going through against that, that law of sin in you, that fight you're going through, it's a light affliction compared to hell. It's a light affliction. I just couldn't help myself. Yes, you could. You're lying. You wanted to do it. You wanted to, but you didn't want to. It's like we know what we're doing, but we really don't know what we're doing. For our life, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, folks, I'm preaching myself. You know, it's pretty hard. I think I'm going to leave <laughs> myself. For our, our light affliction, which is but for a moment works for us, a far more exceeding and eternal way to glory. If you stay in there and fight, it's going to work a wonderful thing for you. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. You mean you're going to, you're going to give up your birthright for a bowl of beans? You know what I'm talking about. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. How long is that little sex escapade going to last? It's temporal. The pleasures of sin are but for a season. God, help us to come to ourselves like that prodigal son. Say, why am I doing this? The voice of the stranger will tell us there's no hope for us, no way out. They were hopelessly, helplessly destined for failure, a mental breakdown or whatever. Even if we have to go to prison and be embarrassed and humbled and ashamed because we violated trust and hurt so many. My best friend growing up was a pastor of the fastest growing church in, in several counties. <laughs> And he went to prison for child molesting. Lost everything. Hurt his family. Oh, how the devil can fool us, cheat us, lie to us. Even if we have to go to prison, be embarrassed, humbled, ashamed because we violate trust, hurt so many. Still, that is such a light affliction, affliction compared to the eternal torment in hell prepared for the devil and his angels. You know, you can get saved in prison and make heaven. Amen. That's not the best way to go about it, but you can. Our defense is to reckon ourselves dead indeed unto the law of sin and alive unto the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, speak to our hearts. God, speak to our hearts. Lord, you're not going to go come and pet us on the head and say, oh, that's okay, I understand. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you have a pass on this. You're not gonna do that, but you'll forgive us if we repent, and you'll heal our land. Praise God, Lord. If we have to repent seven times seventy in the same day, you will forgive us, Lord. Someday, Father, victory's coming. Someday, victory's men. Someday, victory's coming. If you won't give up. If you won't quit by, you're going to see victory. Because the scripture says, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. How long do you have to resist him? How many times will you fail before it works? I don't know. But God promised. Stand on this word. Reckon yourself dead to that. Lord, I don't want this in my life anymore. I want the life of Christ being lived in me and through me. Because he'll never sin. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your holy name, Lord. Bless your holy name. Thank you. Will you stand with me? Please. First, before that, resist the devil and he will flee from you. To submit yourself unto God. Yes. If you don't submit yourself unto God, you are not going to resist the devil and have him flee from you. Praise God. You hear that? That's right, isn't it? Submit yourself to God. Uh, uh, we're not going to win this without a prayer life. Without being in the Word. <laughs> Praise God. None of us in here, some of you have been a pretty big man. And uh, I wouldn't want to get in an argument with you. But none of us are bigger than the devil. 
None of us are big. I'm going to tell you something. None of us are bigger than our own flesh. None of us. He said, I thank God through Jesus Christ. That's how. That's how. We submit to Him. Submit to Jesus Christ. He loves you more than you could ever love your own self. He loves you more than your wife or your children. He loves you more than your mom or your daddy. He loves you, he loves you, he loves you. He's not being mean when he talks about sin. You know, there's the sins talked about in this book, folks, this Bible. Much of the New Testament is talking to us about how to avoid that. After we get saved. Hallelujah. He wants us to make He's for us. Praise God. He's for us. Victory is ours in Jesus' name. If we'll resist, if we'll do these things, if we'll reckon ourselves dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God, praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, help us as men. Help us to know, Lord, we're never going to reform our flesh. We're never going to save it. We're never going to... It, it's never going to be any different from what it is. But, Lord, help us to know that we can greatly diminish its influence in our life if we'll submit to you. If we'll get in your word and get in prayer and, and get connected to some men that love you, Father. And uh, put you first in our home and turn some things off in that house. Get them out of there. Quit going down the same old path we go down. Make some changes. Oh, they're going to hurt. But they won't hurt as much as hell will. Or being embarrassed. Or spending years behind bars. My God. My God, help us as men, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to bless the food. And uh, dismiss you. If there's any more prayer, if you'll come forward, I'll pray for you. We'll believe God for you. You're precious in God's sight. You're precious in God's sight. I heard someone preaching while we've been here that God had to hold his nose concerning this nation. Right? Yeah. Did you hear that? Yeah. I don't want God to have to hold his nose when he comes to me. <clears throat> Praise God. Lord, bless his food. Bless these sweet men, Father. Precious men. Men that you died for. Men that you ever lived to make intercession for. Men that are, God, you're for us. You're for us, praise God. You care. You really care. You care about the things we're facing, Lord. You want us to be overcomers. You want us to reckon ourselves dead indeed unto sin. Help us, Lord. You're our only hope. Not a 12-step program, Lord. You're our only hope. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord bless this food to our bodies in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. This is the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com There are many hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thank you.